The WNBA has experienced significant growth since Caitlin Clark joined the league, drawing comparisons to the impact Michael Jordan and LeBron James had on the NBA. At 22 years old, Clark has quickly established herself as the new face of the WNBA after bringing attention to women's college basketball during her time at Iowa. After Clark's selection by the Fever, the WNBA experienced a significant increase in attendance, TV ratings, and revenue. The WNBA Rookie of the Year attended the Indiana Pacers' victory over the New York Knicks on Sunday at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, which also serves as the home venue for the Fever. With Clark present, renowned NBA announcer Mike Breen enthusiastically acknowledged her accomplishments and their positive impact on the WNBA. The arena was consistently filled during the Indiana Fever games featuring Caitlin Clark this summer, noted Breen. This summer, the local TV ratings for the Fever exceeded those of many Pacers games due to the presence of Caitlin Clark. She has demonstrated the capacity to generate WNBA ratings similar to what Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Steph Curry have accomplished in the NBA. As a result, Clark secured an exclusive endorsement deal with Wilson Sporting Goods Company, a partnership previously reserved only for Jordan. Wilson is the official basketball supplier for both the WNBA and the NBA, and under the agreement, Clark will evaluate products and launch her own line. Clark signed a $28 million deal with Nike in April, similar to the one Jordan signed in the 1980s. Wilson has accompanied me through crucial milestones in my career, and I am thrilled to partner with them to further advance basketball," Clark stated. Having my own basketball collection is a surreal experience, as it allows me to influence future generations of athletes. Following the conclusion of the WNBA regular season, viewership data revealed the significant influence Clark has on upcoming athletes. As per Fox, a total of 1. 178 million viewers watched Clark during the regular season. Last season, the Fever Games saw a significant uptick in attendance, with an impressive 199% increase compared to other WNBA games that averaged 394,000 fans. The Fever Games drew an average of 16,084 fans per game, while non-Fever Games only averaged 8,552 fans. The 88% increase in attention towards Clark does not imply immunity to criticism. As a result of being in the top position, Throughout her rookie season, Clark encountered scrutiny, with fellow WNBA players publicly addressing online harassment from her most fervent supporters. James, a longtime advocate of hers since her rise to stardom in college, came to her defense. Do not misunderstand or confuse the situation. Caitlin Clark is the catalyst for numerous positive developments in store for the WNBA, James declared. I believe that she should refrain from engaging with any external commentary and simply focus on enjoying herself. Personally, I am supporting Caitlin as I can empathize with her situation and relate to her journey. I am hopeful that she excels, and I am anticipating a remarkable performance from Aaliyah Boston, a teammate on the Fever. I am confident that they will excel. Caitlin Clark made history during her inaugural WNBA season with the Indiana Fever, securing the Rookie of the Year title and successfully guiding the team to the playoffs. Recently, she disclosed her sentiments of being upset regarding her draft experience. In her inaugural year in the WNBA, Caitlin Clark achieved a milestone with the Indiana Fever by capturing the Rookie of the Year title and guiding the team to the playoffs. The guard expressed that her draft experience evoked feelings of disappointment. In an interview on the Fresh Talk podcast, Clark disclosed that being chosen as the no. Being selected as the number one overall pick by the Fever presented unforeseen obstacles. She expressed that following her handshake with WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert, she was promptly escorted away, preventing her from celebrating with her family, friends, and loved ones. I was disappointed because right after I was drafted, I was quickly ushered out and didn't get to witness any of the draft, Clark shared with her former Hawkeyes teammates Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall, and Jada Giamfi. I possessed my phone, however, its functionality was limited. It caused me great distress. I missed the opportunity to witness Kate being drafted. It caused great distress to me, she further elaborated. I did not take any photos with my family or teammates, including Connor McCaffrey. Clark's exceptional first season with the Fever ended with a playoff appearance, but they were unable to advance past the first round after being defeated by the Connecticut Sun. Stephanie White will be returning to coach the Fever next season, reuniting with the franchise after leaving in 2016. Clark's first season was truly historic. She achieved the title of WNBA Rookie of the Year with 66 out of 67 votes. Additionally, she made history by becoming the first rookie since 2008 to earn a spot on the All-WNBA First Team, alongside esteemed players such as Aja Wilson and Brianna Stewart. 
Noteworthy accomplishments include setting the WNBA single-season record with 337 assists, as well as breaking rookie records with 769 points and 122 three-pointers. She achieved a historic milestone by becoming the inaugural rookie in league history to achieve multiple triple-doubles. Caitlin Clark, the up-and-coming basketball star, captured attention on Sunday as she sat courtside at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, cheering fervently for the Indiana Pacers during their match against, opposing team. The current WNBA Rookie of the Year seemed to bring good fortune to Indiana, as the Pacers secured a thrilling 132-121 victory, their third consecutive win at home. Tyrese Halliburton impressed with a remarkable 35-point performance, but it was Clark's captivating presence that caught the attention of many. Halliburton delivered a magnificent performance, going 11 of 18 from the field with two rebounds, 14 assists, two steals, and four three-pointers in only 35 minutes of play. In the meantime, Caitlin Clark, known for her skilled performance on the court, received praise for her athleticism and engaging presence during games, contributing to the dynamic atmosphere of the match. Nevertheless, it wasn't just Clark's cheerleading that garnered attention from fans, her fashion selection also caused a stir. The 22-year-old chose a sporty style by wearing an off-white cotton sweatshirt priced at $469. The designer item, with its casual style, gave her a noticeable edge. Social media was abuzz with praise for her stylish and comfortable outfit at the event. Clark, having had a busy weekend, also stood out at Friday's college basketball matchup between Butler University and Missouri State University. This game was particularly meaningful for her as her boyfriend, Connor McCaffrey, made his debut as an assistant coach for Butler after a recent change in the offseason. In a show of unwavering support, Clark took on the role of a proud partner, enthusiastically cheering from the stands as Butler claimed victory with a 72-65 score in their season opener. The weekend painted a picture of true sportsmanship for Caitlin Clark, as she stood by her loved ones and enjoyed the excitement of the game. Clark showcased her profound love for basketball, whether it was cheering on the Pacers from her courtside seat or supporting her boyfriend's coaching debut at Butler. Caitlin Clark's presence at the Pacers game against the Knicks brought an exciting energy to the event, highlighting her influence that reaches beyond the WNBA. As she solidifies her place in the basketball world, fans can anticipate more moments of her dedication to the sport and its community. The presence of Caitlin Clark was celebrated by the Pacers during Sunday's game, sparking speculation as to whether she may be Indiana's lucky charm. Meanwhile, on a chilly January evening in 1995, the fire marshal entered Fountain Central High School's gymnasium, visibly displeased and hinting at a potential code violation with the raucous, overcrowded atmosphere. The audience was seated in the aisles, standing closely together on the bleachers. Folding chairs were arranged in two rows along the sidelines. There were individuals suspended from the chandeliers, recalled Gary Hart, who served as Seeger High's athletic director at the time. A line of individuals stretched all the way to the highway, eagerly anticipating entry to the game. The gym was packed to capacity. The fire marshal, after a thorough inspection of the area, inquired about available seating. Stephanie White was on the verge of surpassing the Indiana girls' high school basketball career scoring record. It appeared that everyone was eager to witness the Seeger senior phenom achieve her 2,617th point in a match against Turkey Run, surpassing the record set by Charleston's Abby Conklin two years earlier. As per the official itinerary, the game was originally planned to take place at Turkey Run, however, the venue was undersized. Only a limited audience of a few hundred individuals had the opportunity to witness White achieve a historic moment in Indiana basketball. Hart, White's former coach from Seeger during his freshman year, successfully arranged to relocate the game to a larger facility. He also contacted Purdue University to inquire about the availability of Mackey Arena. Turkey Run ultimately decided to compete in the game at Fountain Central's larger gym, where a capacity crowd witnessed a player adorned in the no. Jersey with long, dark hair. The 22 delivered precisely what the attendees were seeking. It occurred right at the queue. White achieved a milestone by scoring her 2,617th point on a free throw with one second remaining in the first half, with Seeger in the lead at 41-17. The crowd's enthusiastic response prompted a timeout. This marked a significant milestone. Even supporters of Turkey Run couldn't resist applauding the impressive skills displayed by their opponents. White crouched down, hands resting on her knees as she fought to control her emotions and withhold tears. Upon her second attempt at a free throw, White failed to make the shot, much to the disappointment of both herself and her volleyball coach, Diane Hearn, from Seeger. She expressed frustration at her lack of focus, feeling disappointed in herself. 
Steph's strong competitiveness, dedication to her sport, and relentless work ethic prevented her from taking a moment to appreciate her achievements. White, almost 30 years ago, was not focused on breaking any records that night. Lynn Dunn, a mentor to White and her former coach, stated that such behavior is not characteristic of great athletes during a game. What mattered to her was not that, Dunn emphasized. She reflected on her missed free throw. Caitlin Clark exhibits several traits that are reminiscent of those found in other individuals. The competitiveness, dedication to her craft, and exceptional basketball intelligence she possesses. They share a striking resemblance in that aspect. Stephanie White, the Indiana Fever's new head coach, embodies many qualities reminiscent of Caitlin Clark. Alternatively, it could be viewed in inverse. There is a significant influence of Stephanie White on Caitlin Clark, the star player of the Fever. Before Clark gained recognition in the world of women's sports, White was already making her mark on a smaller scale, demonstrating the greatness of women's basketball without the glamour of social media. I believe we are all aware of her exceptional basketball knowledge and the legendary status she holds in Indiana, Clark expressed to Indy Star recently. I find that to be quite intriguing. Early indications were present. When Dunn first encountered the young girl who would eventually become a part of her team, White was participating in a summer camp at Purdue despite not meeting the age requirements. Steph was 8 at the time, and I recall us ultimately agreeing to list her age as 10, remember Dunn, who would go on to coach White both at Purdue and with the fever. She excelled, matching or surpassing the abilities of children aged 10 to 12. It was the initial encounter when I witnessed her remarkable talent and intelligence on the field. White participated on the 6th grade team at her elementary school during her 5th grade year. Hart declared that Steph was the most outstanding performer during the game. I am not saying this to belittle the other children. She was an exceptional child from the beginning. Similarly, Clark was excelling in basketball and had joined the boys team by 3rd grade. Jill Weston's son was a year ahead of Clark at St. Mary's, showcasing impressive performance. Francis of Assisi Catholic School in Des Moines, Iowa. I was intrigued and felt compelled to witness this event firsthand. Westham, who instructed Clark in sixth grade math and science, wondered aloud, what is her reason for competing against the boys? Upon witnessing her, I immediately realized she belonged with the boys, excelling beyond her age group. Soon, talk about this remarkable Clark girl spread throughout Iowa. 22 years ago, there was discussion in Indiana surrounding a Caucasian girl. Upon reaching Seeger Junior High, White had already achieved widespread recognition in the sports world. She excelled not only in basketball but also stood out as a star player in volleyball and softball. At the time, Herm was in the process of interviewing for the position of Seeger High volleyball coach. During the interviews, Stephanie White's name kept coming up repeatedly, emphasizing her high level of competence, Herm mentioned. They were even aware of this fact by the time they reached 8th grade. White exceeded expectations in high school by excelling as a three-sport athlete in basketball, softball, and volleyball, achieving all-state recognition in each sport. She achieved the title of Indiana's Miss Basketball and successfully led the team to four consecutive semi-state victories. She excelled as a middle in volleyball and as a shortstop in softball. I anticipated the arrival of this exceptional athlete. Hearn expressed astonishment at the versatile abilities of White, whom he now coaches in volleyball at Seeger alongside her mother, Jenny, who serves as an assistant coach. She had the potential to excel at the Division I level in three different sports, but her passion for basketball is so strong that even her mother may not fully understand its origin. During last week's news conference at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, White was officially welcomed as the new coach of the Fever, succeeding Christy Sides. White emphasized her lifelong passion for basketball, highlighting that she has always felt at home in a gym with a hoop and a ball in hand. Regardless of the sport she was involved in during high school, White consistently prioritized basketball. Even amidst volleyball season, she persuaded Hearn to join her at the school at 6 a.m. on certain mornings. She would engage in a pool workout specifically focusing on improving her leg strength and flexibility. On other mornings, she engaged in weightlifting sessions. However, she consistently frequented the gym to hone her ball handling and shooting skills. Hearn, standing at just 5 to 2, would elevate a large broom typically used for cleaning the gym floor to provide White with a target to shoot over. Hearn stated that he followed her instructions without hesitation. Following school, White would attend volleyball practice or participate in a game. Whenever she had a free evening, she engaged in pickup basketball games with a group of men in their 30s at a small gym in West Lebanon. The gym lacked sufficient heating and the cord had noticeable holes. These individuals resorted to physically toughening her up, claimed Hearn. White aimed to be prepared for any challenger she encountered. 
She was among the most dedicated and industrious individuals one could come across. Hart mentioned that she is extremely competitive in all areas of her life, particularly in her favorite sport. She exhausted basketballs, if you can believe that. Over the years, Dunn monitored the progress of the 8-year-old who had caught her eye at summer camp while coaching the Purdue women's team from 1987 to 1996. In the early stages of her high school journey, as a freshman and sophomore, it was evident to all of us how intelligent and dedicated she was to maximizing her potential, Dunn remarked. She dedicated herself to improving her skills year-round, striving to achieve her maximum potential both in and out of season.